Back with Representative Jimmy Matlock. He's been in the state legislature. He would like to serve as the next congressional representative from the 2nd District. Don Bosch. Jimmy, I want to follow up on what Mike was talking about with you. Would you tell those people that are slinging what I think everybody would call inappropriate mud, as you've said, to stop right here today on the show, to stop doing that? For those people I don't know. You know Brad Mays? I don't know Brad other than having met him one Whether time. Whether you know him or not, are you ready to say stop doing that? That I've doesn't help that this race or anybody time else? That I don't understand why I'm being brought into it. Can we do this? Can we turn positive? That's what I well, hope I'd we like do. to hear whether you tell those folks to stop or not this morning. And if please, you can't, please stop. Very good. Thank, Thank you. you. And, and what is it that you have that you want to talk about? John, what I think is critical and what people have been asking me to talk about and what I've been talking about, and I wish you guys would allow me to talk a little bit more about. You know, this is about a difference between character. This is a difference between trust. You have a businessman like me, such as Tra President Trump. You have someone who's been there and done the hard work. Someone who gets up early. Someone who earns trust. 65 years my family has. It's things I've done. I'm used to contracts in business. And so what we've done in our campaign, I wish you would hand that out. I'm going to put that online. I'm going to give it to everybody starting tomorrow. We've developed what we call a covenant. It's more than a contract. In business, we are committed. A covenant means it comes directly from us. It means it can't be broken. If it somehow gets challenged, then people have a right to call me out. Inside of this, and I want you all to look at this closely, these are the things I stand for. These are the values which I have. These are the people in the second district they are screaming out in this campaign, would somebody please tell us what they're for? <coughs> I've been trying to do that, but it's getting so clouded with me being accused. So give us those highlights well, right now. They look could like you pass well, we can't quite read them here in, sure. in about three minutes. Well, so that, tell, you tell us what you think the first, is important. Enthusiastic support for President Excuse Trump, me. commitment to border security, opposition to sanctuary cities, uh, consistent defense on the sanctity of life, consistent support for the Second Amendment, focus on eliminating deficits and debt. Do you, do you generally believe that decisions are best made closer to home? No question. Well, if I'm not necessarily, I'm not advocating for sanctuary cities, but the key word there is city. If the city of Memphis wanted to be a sanctuary city, why shouldn't they be allowed? I voted against that. I would never allow that. Why not? Why should that not be up to that Memphis? That supersedes the law. We don't allow a city to break the law. That's breaking a federal law. I see mention of term limits there says you would vote for term limits, but would you impose term limits upon yourself? I would absolutely saying, vote for it and will commit tonight to term limits. I noticed Mayor Burchett was confused. He has on his website, he's for term limits, but when you all quizzed him about that two weeks ago, he said, well, maybe, possibly, we'll see. What do you think is proper for a congressional office? I have been thinking 12 <laughs> years, not to exceed six that. Terms. Six terms. That's consistent with what senators serve. That could be, you know, I, I'm 59 years old. I've not got a long time to serve. I want to give it everything I've got 100% every day. And I'm not seeing myself going past 12 years. And, and, you, and if, you, if you went to a 12 year, would you be in favor then of re-election every four years instead of two? You, you're you know, always campaigning with it every two <laughs> years. And one of the problems, and you're right about that, Mike, is we're constantly having to be campaigning. That's not right. I've been in the state legislature, the citizen legislature, by the way, where I can run my business take care of my family and 64 other families and serve my customers, but part-time go down to Nashville, that's a challenge. That's difficult. You're constantly having to evoke a campaign attitude throughout your service time, mm -hmm. and I would be open to considering that. What do you see as the number one issue facing the second congressional district? I don't think there's any question. We support the president through his economic plans. It's phenomenal. On the way up here, if y'all allow me, I, I just wrote down in this district what we need to be doing. We need to support businesses like this. H.T. Hackney, Pilot Flying J, Wampers Farm Sausage, Bush Brother Beans, to Royal Industry, Colonial Freight, Denso, Coffin Shoe Company, Sweetwater Valley Cheese, Steve Longmeyer, Granger County Tomatoes, Dayton Pest Control, Knoxville Wholesale what, Furniture, of all West that, Chevrolet. What needs to be done now that's not already being done? We need done. the government Those are all out. successful businesses. We need them out of the lives <laughs> of large and small businesses to the extent we can. The thing that Trump has done that never he gets credit for, that I'm certainly in favor of, is lessening the regulation on every level. Take away a bureaucrat's ability to supersede the law, to give these businesses lower taxes, to give their employees hope that tomorrow they'll make more money than they did today. That's what we need in the district. 
That's what's happening in our economy. It's already working. Oak Ridge National Laboratory, a tremendous driver of this economy. In these businesses, they need the government to come and only aid or help where least necessary. Actually, you but all their money is pretty from the closely with, with President Trump, but he didn't propose funding nearly as much for the Oak Ridge reservations as Those folks were uh, is emerging. Uh, so you're, you're, you're saying what, that we should have more money for the Oak Ridge reservations? I think or are in you the, good with what the president The wanted? current budget gives Oak Ridge quite a raise on what the budget was from the president. But the good news is the budget is proposed by the president, but the legislation is where it passes in the Congress or the Senate. This is one of the most beautiful districts in the country. It is. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm curious when you start talking about removing regulation, uh, how do you feel about the current set of environmental regulations and how important are those to you that we maintain this land safely? There's no question it's critically important. <coughs> what a beautiful day I had going through Claiborne and Granger County at the base of the mountains. We have it at our disposal, the Great Smoky Mountains. No one with common sense would ever take away regulations that would impose or hurt those mountains. That's where our tourism dollars come from. That's where our abilities to walk and enjoy come from. But I don't know of anybody that doesn't think the government is already in an overreach condition. Some Environmentally in an oh, overreach absolutely. condition? Oh, absolutely. I'll tell you, there's one person that doesn't think we're in overreach, and he's on the end of this panel. Okay, well, we, we're going to respectfully disagree on that. Understood. Well, let me, can, can I ask you, at, 30 at, seconds. At, at the state, you have always balanced the budget as required by the Constitution. Thank goodness. The current federal budget, uh, and, I, and, and I take it you support the budget as passed, we reduced revenue and increased spending. How Terrible. is that a good thing? It's not. It's not. The state of Tennessee lays out the blueprint for what the federal government do, should do. If you'll allow me, and these voters will allow me, give a businessman the opportunity, someone who loves this area, six generations in this community, who wants to go to Washington and impose, to the extent I can, what has been done in Tennessee, specifically has been done in this great community. I'd love to have your vote, your support. This is who you can elect, a businessman, someone you can trust. Representative Matlock, thanks for your time. Appreciate it. Best Thank of luck you. to you. Thank you. We're back with another candidate in the 2nd Congressional District right after this.